Hey guys, it's Alexei from Ace 5 Studios. And as you know, Cinema 40 R23 is out and it has a whole bunch of great new features. Um, personally though, I have some stuff that really makes my life better, you know, on a daily use. Because honestly, there are new features in Cinema 40 are great. New features everywhere are great. But, you know, they don't, sometimes like you can get a huge new feature and then it doesn't really affect the way you work every day. So I like to make these videos when a new release comes out about stuff that changes my daily life for the better. And so this is going to be a collection of those. Later on, I will make more extensive videos on the new features of Cinema 4D. So don't forget to subscribe and bell icon and whatever YouTubers say. <laughs> but for now, let's have a look at the stuff that just makes my everyday life so much nicer in Cinema 4D. Okay, so first thing I absolutely love about R23 is such a simple thing, but if I make an object, and I drag it around here, look at this, I can highlight if it's inside or if it's below, and it's so easy to see where exactly your object is gonna be. So when you drop it, you don't have to look at that little arrow thing that you used to have to with a little plus or whatever. Now you can actually drag it and see exactly where it's gonna go. This is super nice, I just love it. Um, such a small thing, but such a huge quality of life improvement. All right, next thing is Delta Mush. Um, you've probably heard of it before, but Delta Mush is basically like, we used to have a smoothing deformer, um, this one here, and it's a good deformer, but Delta Mush is much nicer. Uh, in this example, example, this is a new character pack that I'm working on. Uh, if we grab this guy and we rotate him, you can see we can get these kind of, you know, especially on fat characters, it's kind of hard. And especially if you move, for example, if you curve something down on the left here, you get this kind of unpleasant, um, you know, sharpness kind of going on. And Delta Mush just fixes that right up. Just default settings, it just fixes it all the way. It's a very nice smoothing algorithm which keeps a lot of shape. Like we can check on this bear thing I have. And here basically if we get this keyframe gets, sorry, this joint and we bring it up and then we get this shoulder one, let's bring it up as well. And see, look at this, we get this ugly sticking in there and Yes, it could be fixed with better weight painting, but look at how nice, Delta Mush, boom, smooth, and it doesn't lose all the volume. Like the other smooth that we had, let's have a look how that works. If we plug in our old smooth, <laughs> yeah, it obviously does that, but that's not even the case. The thing is you can actually go initialize and you can change it to like stretch. And that's still, it's nice. Uh, it's definitely better, but you see it affects the ear for some reason and it, it, it's still good, but Delta Mush is just better and faster and it's open source and it just, yeah, and it, yeah, I think mostly it's faster. Anyway, it's a great little plugin here and you can also increase the iterations and it'll stretch like a whole bunch of stuff. It also stretches really nice, like when you, um, um, when you stretch stuff, it just, it does such a nice kind of even stretch, like, I don't know, can't even explain it too well here, but uh, basically it's a very good smoothing algorithm. Just trying to find a place where it'll be really obvious the difference between the old one. Yeah, see kind of here. It, yeah, see that like with the smoothing one, it kind of stretches a lot of the stuff and also stretches the ear for some reason. And you got to paint the parts that you don't like and see why does the ear smooth when you smooth it. I don't know why the ear moves, but it does. But with Delta Mush, it just smooths exactly and it maintains volume much better. So yeah, basically just Delta Mush, great little smoothing deformer. Super helpful in uh, rigging, especially if you don't like weight painting. Unfortunately, a large part of my work is weight painting, so I guess that's gonna go away. <laughs> Since everyone will just be able to use Delta Mush deformer, but very good for, you know, building this kind of stuff. Like if you work, especially if you do like mix hammer auto rigs, Delta Mush is gonna make them so much smoother than they were before. So definitely have a look at Deformer, it's in here. Just make sure, where is it, Delta, Delta Mush, and make sure you put it underneath the skin Deformer and it'll be sweet. And just the default settings work, beautiful. Okay, next thing I love about, which is gonna be just great for character animators and everyone do, like it's not only for character animations, for any kind of you know, ring break positions, but it's so useful, it's the pose library. It was very needed and we have it now and it's just great. So basically um, now if we go to character manager and we go pose library browser, we have a little database here of poses to create the stuff here. I'll show you how to create it later. 
but basically now uh, we can open this little, we can click on me and then we can open our little browser here with pictures and we can just click on them and it'll move the stuff to whatever position you want. And you know, also your face, sad, happy, kicking. So convenient, so lovely. You can just click on these and it, you don't have to have like, you know, keyframes and negative timelines or whatnot. You just click on stuff and it happens. If you do character animation, this is an absolute must. This is great. Um, and unlike the, the thing is, unlike the pose library, like you, you could used to be able to use the pose morph tag to kind of do this, but then every time you use it, then you couldn't move stuff because it was just stuck where it was. Whereas here you can do it, adjust it, you know, see where you need it and then keyframe the stuff. Now, how do you create a pose? That is important. Let's make a new pose. Let's move this leg somewhere in here. Let's make a nice yoga pose. And move this guy further up. Now, when you create a new pose, a couple of things to keep in mind. <coughs> That's the wrong button. Let's, there you go, we have it. Whatever, let's say this is the pose that we're looking for. <laughs> now, uh, when you, if you click here, you click on your sound, my body group and you add pose, it'll only add the pose to the selected object. So if you want all of your controllers to select it, make sure you go to your control and it'll click on it and then click this create new pose button and you see it new pose and we're going to click on it and call it yoga one. And we're going to also press this little button to make a thumbnail. Perfect. And now here we can go default kick yoga one. Um, it will definitely, it will use only the uh, controllers that you have selected. So if you only have the hand selected, for example, if we move just this hand, say here, or let's just, I don't know, let's just move this leg all the way out, something like this position. There you go. And if we click add pose, um, this will only keyframe this location. So if we go back to like lean left, and then we go to our new pose here, you'll see it's just the leg that moves up. So you have to make sure you select all the controllers that you want to save the pose when you're saving a pose. So that's important. Now, the next thing actually is a kind of important feature is if you have multiple rigs with the same naming convention or the same kind of controllers, let's say we copy this one around, let's control drag the Mia rig. So now if we click, say lean left, they're both lean left, they're both default, they're both kicking, they're both sad, they're both, but you can switch this limit to from selection, you can change it to selection hierarchy and then you just click Mia rig here and you go sad and only she's affected. And same thing with body go lean left and only this one is only the one selected. Only the selected hierarchy will be affected. So this is a super little handy little thing down here. And I oh, don't forget to save because this whole database thing saved separately from your project file. So if you have, you know, multiple characters with the same kind of hierarchy, then you can use this on multiple characters and multiple projects and it saves all in one database, which is convenient, but it doesn't save with your project. So make sure you don't forget to click this a lot. Otherwise you might crash and you lose everything. Okay, another thing that I'm really digging is the new viewport features. We have finally reflections, which are, um, you'll see. So basically we've always had reflections. So you can, here you can, uh, material. So that's a reflective material in the plane. And if we go shift V for viewport settings, um, we also here go mode and view settings and then we go to effects and here we have reflections turned on and we can turn on screen space reflections. Um, right now there, the distance here is too low. So you got to whack this distance up. So it draws more stuff up. Um, you might want to turn this on or off depending on how high resolution your screen is. If you're using like a super high resolution screen, maybe turn it on, but otherwise turn it off for better reflections here. And you can see already we have the legs, but if you remember in the old cinema 40, uh, in any version previous to this, if we went to the material and we turned on our roughness, it would, the deflection would just disappear. But right now we get to keep it, which is great. So this will be very useful for, you know, various renders. It's still very limited to what you can see. So as you go up, you'll see it breaks a bit. So it's not the most useful, but it's great for, you know, visualizing stuff and for previews, this is very helpful that now we have reflections inside blurry reflections. Super sweet. Now, the next thing that's also super sweet. Also, you'll see the viewport's kind of um, struggling here, but that's mostly because I've got screen recording running. Without screen recording, it's actually working pretty well. It was still getting like 30 frames a second. So the next thing that we have is transparency. 
we finally have proper transparency in the viewport. This is just great. Turn off our reflection here for a second. There. So this is wonderful. So now when you do when you do previews for car renders or interiors, you can have actual glass which is transparent. This is just very convenient because before it was always a problem. You get like these cross hatches or something. So this is just super, very, very, very nice to have proper transparency. Love this. This will be very useful for making, you know, preview animations. Um, yeah, so these are the things that I love about the viewport. Super convenient. Okay, next part I'm really digging is we have some kind of a new sculpting workflow. Now, um, a couple of versions ago when we got volumes, we got a super handy feature um, that we can now resolve. Hexahedron. So let's make it editable. So basically the sculpt tools, if you don't know, um, these brushes here, they work on any geometry. So you can use them on whatever you want. So we can you know, bring this in, we can pull it out, we can make a little whatever this head thing is. And uh, we can subdivide it, but this like, you know, we can just use the subdivide from the mesh, where is it? This one, let's bring this out. So we, the, the classic workflow is you, you know, subdivide it and then you have this mesh. But the thing is, what if you want to pull some horns out of this guy? Like what if you're, you know, you're drawing with a pull brush, you know, you've got, I think we need some layer manager. Let's increase our subdivisions a bit. So let's drag this guy. So we draw some eyebrows. Um, Draw some eyes here, we draw a nose. Now let's say we want to pull some horns out, right? So drag them out. And we're like, okay, cool, let's go grab and let's pull them out. And ugh, that's not good. We'll get some really wireframe stuff. So in the past, what we have is actually in your mesh command, we have this thing called volume. Let's drag this out so we also have volume mesh here. So if we click it, it'll kill all of that, but it'll remesh it so it's nice and smooth now. And this is great. Um, but you can see it's not really that smooth and you can fix that. You have in this volume mesh thing, you have this wonderful smoothing option. So you can press okay. That's a bit too much. So let's go settings here, make this three centimeters. <laughs> oh, excuse me. So voxel size three, there you go. And now we have this kind of nicer. So we smooth this guy out. Let's go, you know, grab our pull our eyebrows, zoom in, and maybe grab these guys out a couple more times. Oops. So, and again, we're still sticking. So while we're doing this, we're remeshing, we're sculpting, you know, it's too much smoothing. Maybe keep outlines. There you go. That works better. But the thing is now, what if we want to go back to, and why didn't these guys edit, editable? Uh, what if we want to go back to our multi-sculpt? Now we can use the, you know, we can click on it and click subdivide, but it's not quite smooth because it's subdividing these, see, so getting these ugly stuff, which isn't really great for sculpting. Like we can smooth it out, but it's still, it's not a good mesh. So let's delete our tag here. What we have now is we have a remesh. So if we press shift C and go remesh, holding the alt key, we can double click on it. Now, if we turn on wireframe, we just got a quad mesh. How fast was that? It's just, it's a deformer. We can turn it off and we can turn it on and it's just not, and you can decide how dense you want it to be. You can have a low dense, you can have high dense. It's very convenient. So there's a little progress bar there. So let's drag it down. It's taking too long. Press escape. There you go. So this is super convenient. There's a bunch of settings here. Um, we do polygon count. It's just amazing. I am super thrilled with this because now we can just hit C to make it editable. And now we can, if we turn off the wireframe, it doesn't have any of those ugly lines on it. And we just hit subdivide, 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 subdivide. That's too much subdivide, but now we have a much smoother mesh. Let's get out. See, and it's so much smoother than, oops, than it was before. Now we can keep sculpting on it and now we have these guys here, which we can sculpt on as well. And it's just that uh, I think is a great workflow for sculpting. Obviously it's no ZBrush, it's no 3D coat, but 
for a lot of stuff, I can see myself just using this in cinema instead of, you know, taking it to a different app and, you know, retopologizing it and doing all stuff. You can just go through. And also within your UV tools that we got in S22, it means you can do a quick retopo and a quick unwrap here. And for a lot of stuff, this is going to save a ton of time. You know, if you don't have to keep on going to other apps to do stuff, this is just, you know, super convenient. Well done, Maxon. Love this stuff. Um, yeah. Okay, another great feature that I kind of really like about Cinefoy, just the quality of life upgrades, these are just my favorite usually, is the deformers. A couple of deformers now. Ugh, here, fix this thing here. Where is it? Don't know, freeze, pull, W2. There's two different wireframes in sculpting now. There's NB, oops, which is this one. Or there's the grab one. And if you hit W, it'll turn off and turn on the wireframe. So, yeah, if your wireframe is all orange, make sure you go into a sculpt tool and press W and it'll turn it off. So, freeze this guy up, allow deformations. Let's stick a deformer in here, like holding a shift E bent. And now you can see the bent deform actually has a nice little arrow. And it has this like fit to parent before the button. So, we can press fit to parent and we can bend this guy, which is great. And also, I feel like they're really fast, the deformers. They just deform stuff really quickly. But the cool stuff is now if you want to change the orientation of a deforming, if you have the wrong direction, you can just go plus X and fit to parent. And now it'll point that way. And now you're bending it this way. So this is super convenient. And I think it'll save a lot of time when you create deformers. And a couple of these deformers have the new arrows. So we also have the, where is it? Um, twist also has a spiral thing, as you can see. And again, you can easily fit to parent like this and then you can twist it. Or you can go, well, I want it to be a plus X fit to parent and now it'll twist this way. So again, a great quality of life improvement, just very convenient. Use the formers a lot and this will save a bunch of kind of head pointing. And also uh, when they're selected, they're kind of purple. And if you turn off a deformer, it disappears from the viewport. Brilliant. Very convenient. Love this stuff. Keep up the great work. Another super handy thing is now instances. Um, if you set them to render instances, you can press C to make them editable. Very convenient. Again, small thing, but before, if you had render instances and you needed to make one of them editable, you have to select it, you have to switch it to a normal instance, and then you can make it editable now. If you just leave it and press C. Again, very convenient. Thanks, Max, on such a small thing, but I remember having just, you know, a couple of times, that, well, not a couple, it happens often when you press C and it doesn't work, and now you just press C and you're like, boom, you have your object. Thank you. Another super handy little feature is remember when you used to render stuff, say, for example, here you have your um, alpha channel straight out alpha turned on and you pressed render and you got this with these ugly little edges and you're like, Ugh. well, now you go view and you go enable image transparency and boom, you can see your alpha map. Very convenient. Also small stuff, but damn useful. So love that. Okay. Thanks for sticking through with that. Hope you learned something useful. Uh, don't forget to check out my website for free rigs and you know paid rigs that you can use in your projects. I got a whole bunch of stuff over there. And more tutorials, definitely. Lots more tutorials on my website and on my YouTube channel and wherever else you're watching this. So yeah, hope you have a good one. Leave a comment if you have any questions. I'll try to answer them. And yeah, I'll see you later.